So I was just thinking about what I want to make for Din Din tonight, and uh, I can't decide between a pot pie or macaroni and cheese. It's a single boy, or uh, I should say bachelor. I'm not a boy, I'm a man, so I'm a bachelor, and that's a bachelor meal, if you, uh, if you give a shit about that kind of thing. Okay, Splash Woman. Yeah, we're not saving the girl for last, I don't care, you know. Uh, you know, chivalry's dead, so let's kill the woman. I'm just kidding. But not really. She's not really a woman, she's a robot, right? I kind of touched on that in the first episode, you know, but of course the first episode was extremely hard for you to hear what I was fucking saying, so... Splash Woman could not be a woman because she is a robot. You know, just because she has, like, a female figure doesn't make her a woman. And I guess it doesn't- it, I guess you could say the same thing about any of these, uh, robots in this game. Like, how can they be men? Because they don't have- they don't have men parts. You know, some of them don't even have legs. Like, how can you be a man if, you know, there's- if you don't have, like, certain things in your- in your pants, if you know what I'm saying. And I'm not- I'm not saying, like, you know, they're non-binary, gender neutral. Alright, let's just- let's just avoid these guys. Oh, fuck. Whatever. This is another level that has some pretty sweet music. Come on, fuck you. That's more like it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, this was my ringtone for a long time. I love this uh, music on Splash Woman stage. That's another thing this game got really right that they could have really fucked up fast, is, um... The, uh... Music. You know? Music is really underrated in video games, especially nowadays. Like... If, if video games have soundtracks nowadays, they are, they are very, like, hard to notice. And, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not blaming the composers of the video games. I'm sure vi certain video games do have very good, um, very good music, but it's just so hard to hear it over everything else. There's all these, uh, you know, dialogues, there's, like, you know, different uh, characters interjecting and you're getting these walking cutscenes where, you know, characters are talking over each other and they're talking over the music and the music is very, very low so you can make sure you can hear all the voice acting work. It's like, you know something? Plot lines in video games pretty much suck ass. That's like a, that's almost like a universal fact to someone who's played a lot of video games. I think the only exceptions are like, Metal Gear Solid, and... I don't know, I would say Yakuza is pretty damn good, but Yakuza is like a comedy, sort of. But, like... I don't know, I can't think of... I can't think of too many video games uh, that have stories that are so good that I, like, really, really want to replay the game just to watch the story, you know? A lot of people will say Uncharted, but those games all kind of blend together in my mind a little bit. Um, The Last of Us was good. The Last of Us is a good game. Um, good story, I should say. Uh, well, it's a good game, but it's good not despite of its story. It's good because of its story. Uh, but yeah, Metal Gear Solid... Motherfucker. Uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, The Last of Us... Fuck, it's hard to think of other games that, like, have good, like, stories that are that good. I mean, there are games that have good plots. Uh, there are games that have good voice acting. There are games that have, you know, good dialogue. But when I say story, I mean the sum of, the, the sum of all of its parts, you know? The voice acting, the dialogue, and the script, everything is just really, really good. And there's no denying it. Metal Gear Solid is one of those few games that actually fits the bill. Um, The Last of Us also does. I think The Last of Us is a really good game. I played it twice when I first got it. I should probably play it again. Um, I actually bought it again on PS4. Uh, you know, the remastered version, because, you know, nowadays every game has to be remastered, even if it's only been, like, two years since the game was released. <laughs> I realize the irony of that because I'm actually playing uh, the Mega Man 
Legacy Collection, which is a re-release. Alright, let's just get rid of this fucking T-Blow. Yeah! Blow you away, motherfucker. I figure there's no reason not to use T-Blow. That's Tornado Blow, by the way. Just want to beat this level. This boss is actually pretty easy. Um, this is one of the bosses that... I usually either start with... God, the same part, too. I usually either start with um, Splash Woman or Galaxy Man. And it's kind of um, perfect, because if you start with Splash Woman or Galaxy Man, you can kind of start with like a different slew of weapons. Normally, if uh, you're fighting, or if you're playing a Mega Man game, there is like only one boss you want to start with. Like, Mega Man 2, you gotta start with Metal Man. You just do. Uh, Mega Man 1... It's probably best if you start with Cut Man in Mega Man 1. Mega Man 3, I would say either Magnet Man or Top Man. But Top, Man we uh, Top Man's weapon really sucks. So you probably want to go with Magnet Man. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I haven't even played Mega Man 3 yet. Oh my god. I'm already up to Mega Man 9 and I haven't even played 3. What the fuck am I doing? I never know, man. Let's see, what are we gonna do? Get rid of this fucker. Just black hole. Suck you up! That's not gonna get... Yeah. Look at look at how much in this game that they're able to do with like so little. They got a blank background, they got little things moving out of the walls. And this is, like, really great platforming. Like, this is a twist on the regular platforming that you would normally get in older Mega Man games. Like, man, I just love the way this game is designed. I don't know what it is. It's, it speaks to me. It, like, rumbles my, uh, my game... Well, my would-be game developer senses. Fuck you, you little fucker. Okay, here we go. Get rid of this fucker. Black Hole Bomb might be my favorite weapon in this game, but I don't know. Uh, what's it called? Jewel Satellite's pretty good, too. Alright, here we go. So we're just gonna use bees. And once again, this boss is very good uh, at um, taking the hits for her weapon. Because she goes up here, and she actually like stays up there for the majority of the fight. And you don't really need to go after her, because you got the bees. You know what the bees remind me of? They remind me of Launch Octopus's weapon in Mega Man X, because it works the same exact way. Alright. One more. Uno mas. We got Concrete Man. Alright, we got Laser Trident. So... Laser Trident is like a piercing version of your regular X-Buster, basically. Or your... they don't call it an X-Buster, uh, your, your gun. Concrete Man is all that's left. What I love about this game is that every weapon works differently. Like, I'm, a, I'm actually gonna pause and I'm gonna... I'm gonna give you a quick little rundown. Okay. Magnum Bazooka is your charge weapon. It fires three shots, so it's also like a little shotgun item. So, it's like a shotgun and it's a charge gun. Two in one. What can you go wrong with? So you got the Hornet Chaser, which is like your homing weapon. That's pretty straightforward. Black Hole Bomb can go through walls and it can suck up, like, the biggest enemies in the game. It's like the most powerful weapon, basically, but it's super slow. So it's balanced. T-Blow is a screen-clearing weapon, but you can only use it four times. Jewel Satellite is a reflector weapon that protects you from getting shot by enemies. Laser Trident is a piercing version of your regular M-Buster. And P-Ball is a um, wall hugger that can crawl up walls and hit enemies on the ceiling. Like, and then this weapon that we're gonna get in this level is, um, once again, it's like a little bit different. Uh, I won't spoil what it is, I'll just show you. But basically it creates platforms for you. Good stuff. All around, just like, good stuff. This game is so good. Alright. Oh, fuck! I didn't think that through. You know what I should do? 
Well, actually, it's probably good that I died right there, because that guy came over anyway. I think I finally got back into the swing of this uh, game. I'm not dying as much. I'm still dying, but I'm not dying, like, as much. It's not that bad. Let's go with Hornet Chaser. Why not? Got these birds. These birds actually remind me of Pidgey from uh, Pokemon. Like, look at their colors. It's like white and brown. That's Pidgey. It looks exactly like Pidgey. Or maybe, uh, Spiro? tricky, actually. <laughs> Alright. So, let's use the ball to get rid of this fucker. Ow. Alright. P-ball might not have been the best choice. Uh, Black Hole Bomb was probably the best choice. There we go. Plug Ball is good for something. Why is it Plug Ball? It's not a ball. Why not, like, Plug Shock or Plug... Plug Zap? Plug Ball? Like, what the hell? Oh shit, oh shit. This is working. Alright. I'm satisfied. Ow. Easy. See, these weapons are all good. Okay, this won't work here. Uh, let's try... I would say let's try El Trident, but I gotta save it for the boss. Go with M Bazooka. There we go. And let's grab that too, why not? So this is another thing the bees do, they grab items for you. So that's how you can get that item in um, Plugman stage that I was talking about a few episodes ago. Alright, 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 and we go Black Hole Bomb. Once you have your arsenal in this game, like, there's no enemy that can uh, like, catch you off guard. It's great. Like, fuck that kind of thing. Fuck this thing. So you can tell which blocks you're gonna fall through uh, by looking at them. Uh, so there's like an indent in the ones that are safe to walk over, and there's a, um, there's like an outrid, uh, an outer dent on the other ones. So, um, if you don't know what I mean, it's like Lego pieces. It's like a bottom piece if you can walk on it, it's a uh, top piece if you can not walk over it. Whoops. There we go. Okay, look at this, too. You want to know how much detail they put into an 8-bit game? Check this out. I'm standing in this grass, and I walk, and as I move forward, I actually walk behind this other grass in front of me. So I'm walking, like, through grass, and I, I pop out again. So it's like... Like, that's crazy. Why, like, why did they have to do that? I don't know. But it's... I appreciate so much that they did, you know? The developers in this game were, like, out of their minds with the detail, and it's actually awesome. I love it. Okay, so now we got the last Robot Master. It's gonna be Concrete Man, so we want L Trident. I'm not actually sure what the L stands for. Is it Lightning? No, it can't be. Let's do this without getting hit. Yeah, motherfucker! No hits. How do you like that, huh? <laughs> That's my uh, Pete Valdez laugh. Alright, so we got a little chip. What's that? So, uh, what that chip was, I'm gonna just tell you right now, is, uh, 
a plot thing. It doesn't actually mean anything. So concrete shot. Okay, so this can freeze your enemies, which is a new thing, unlike any other weapon in the game. And it can also create platforms for you to jump on. That's great, right? Every item does something different. This is the memory circuit board. We can play back his memory to see why he went crazy! No, don't text me right now. I'll put it on the screen. Okay, so I gotta point something out right here. You see how you see silhouettes of every single Robot Master that I've killed so far? But, the Robot Master that I killed uh, to get this item that caused this cutscene is not here in this cutscene. So, where is Concrete Man? He's not here. You know? From left to right. Okay, you got Jewel Man, you got Hornet Man, you got Plug Man, you got Galaxy Man up there, you got Mag uh, Magma Man, you got Tornado Man, and Splash Woman. But Concrete Man is not there. Because I'm looking through his eyes right now. That's what this memory thing does for the plot. Like, that's so detailed. That's freaking amazing. I love that. Okay. So what are you trying to say? I'm saying... You're all going to end up in the junkyard. Of course. When we're done with our work, that's what happens. That's sad. It's not just you. Millions of robots all over the world are winding up as piles of junk. You work hard for humans, and then they destroy you when you're no longer needed. Doesn't that make you angry? Hmm. Just because you reach some arbitrary expiration date doesn't mean you should be scrapped. You are still quite useful. You have a right to live. I'm going to help you. Together, we'll show the world how useful you can all still be. Hmm. Perhaps you're right. You all still want to be used to the people. Can you repair us? Ah, uh, you piece of shit. I'd be glad to. You're in good hands with me. Yeah, he looks like a trustworthy guy, doesn't he? So just turn this over to the police and let them arrest him. He's a he's a mad scientist. It was Wily all along. Oh my god, who could have seen that coming, right? Oh! Oh, he steals the evidence. You son of a bitch. Okay, so you know the drill. Now we're gonna go fight Wily. But first, uh, I'm gonna cut the video, and then I will be back right back. Bye.